guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video we are going to be making a crinkle sack for the ferret. I've done this in previous videos a really really long time ago when I first started my channel um, but it was not this detailed and I'm actually going to be making this with what I call like an open mouth so I'll make snuggle sacks like this too where there's boning in it and the opening just stays open. So for this video <laughs> you're going to need some fabric um, I'm not exactly sure which fabric I'm going to use. That's why there's a bunch sitting here. I'm going to be using flannel. I know that. I'm also going to be using fleece. So flannel for the outside and fleece for the inside. Um, you're going to need some scissors, a pen, clip, ruler, your sewing machine. You could hand stitch this. It just would probably take a minute. Um, you're going to want some boning, which I got this off of Amazon, but you can also just pick it up at the craft store. I mean, really, you should just probably Joann's is the best place or somewhere like that. Um, crinkle paper, which I also got off of Amazon. So I will put links to all of the stuff that you can get off of Amazon in the description. Um, this was some minky fleece that I have been dying to use that I've had for a while. I got it on the clearance section. Normally when Joann's gets to the end of a bolt and they can't use like it's not enough to really sell it in yard increments. They do what's called remnants and you get them 50% off. I've had this forever. It's insanely soft and I've been dying to use it, but I just haven't, I haven't. So it's just been sitting here. So I'm going to use that um, for the inside of this pouch. And I think that's all we need for the moment. So let's get started. Okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take my flannel fabric and I'm going to fold it so that it's right sides together. Um, the size is up to you. It's kind of your personal preference as to how big, um, long or wide you want it. I am going to make mine as big as I can, but because I'm using a piece of remnant for the minky, I'm going to have to make it, um, I have to be careful about the size because I can't make it bigger than the, <laughs> than the piece of minky. So again, and if you have a pattern and you want it to go a certain way, make sure you pay attention to that. These kind of, these cupcakes go all directions, so it doesn't really matter. So I folded this right sides together. Now I'm going to cut um, measure and cut my sack out. So um, now I have to decide what length I'm going to make it. I think I'm going to make it 24 by 16 maybe. So I'm just going to measure this. So next what you need to do is I'm going to cut a piece of crinkle paper. I'm actually probably going to cut two because I want crinkle to be around the entire thing. So you want your crinkle paper to be about an inch wider all the, than, than the entire than this entire piece except here's the thing the opening whatever ends going to be your opening we'll say this is my opening i'm actually going to stop my crinkle paper about an inch before the opening um it'll just make it easier to sew it at the end it may not make sense now but after doing a bunch of crinkle tunnels i typically don't put the crinkle paper all the way up where i do that final top stitch at the end because it just gets to be a little difficult so I'm just going to make it an inch wider all the way around and I'm going to not put crinkle paper on this last inch of wherever your top is going to be. So my top will be up here. So now I've cut my crinkle paper. Let's just flip this over. So we're just going to clip the pink crinkle paper on the edge, right along the edge of the crinkle paper. So here's the edge along the edge of your... Okay. Now when you get down to the bottom, you're going to notice that there's going to be more. So you have to kind of let it fold up. It's going to be bunchy in the middle. That's what you want because that's what helps this be crinkle, crinkly. So it's going to be a little weird. It's going to look almost three dimensional and that's okay because that's what, that's kind of what you're going for. Um, that's what's going to make this crinkle the way that you want it to. Okay. So you should have something that looks like this. Now I am going to also put crinkle paper on the other side of this. Okay. So now you should have paper on both sides. It's going to be bubbly on both sides. That's what you want. We're going to go to our sewing machine and we're going to start at, at now don't, you're only going to sew three sides. So you're going to leave this a top opening open. I have this marked. This is my top. You're going to sew all the way down and around. Um, it may be difficult to sew over the crinkle paper. If you find that to be the case, you may have to sew this first to secure your seams and your stitches really tightly and then come back and add the crinkle paper um, where you're just doing big stitches to kind of hold it in place um, because sometimes I find that it's difficult to stitch over crinkle paper so we'll see get 
Okay, you should have something that looks like this. And you can set this aside for a second. Okay, so I put this, I brought this back for a second just to show you guys. So what I've done is I've taken my minky, or if you're using fleece, that's fine, and I've put it right sides facing together. And I do my snuggle sacks a couple of different ways. For this project, I'm gonna do it where this is a little bit longer than this is when I cut it. So I want my minky to be about three inches longer than my snuggle sack because I, I want to use this to roll. I want to roll down over top when I'm done and I want to feed through my boning. So this measures about 24 inches when it's done. We lost a half an inch for seam allowance. So I'm going to measure my minky. I'm kind of going to cheat here, but you could just measure this. So if this is 24 inches, you would, I, I would make this 27 inches. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to just take my ruler at the top there. Just kind of put a line so I know this is about where I want the length I want it to be from the bottom up. And um, we're going to measure it out now. So we're going to cut this um, the same size that we cut this before we started, which um, was 16. I cut it 16 by 24, but I'm going to cut my, my minky, or in your case, if you're using fleece, I'm going to cut it 16 by 27. So now that you've cut out your inside fabric, whether it's fleece, minky, um, you're going to stitch on three sides. This is folded. There's no cut edge here. So obviously that's going to be my bottom. This is going to be my opening. So I am not going to stitch across here. I'm going to put a little mark. I mean, I know not to stitch there, but just in case you need to remind yourself, just put a little mark on. No one's going to see that. Go to your sewing machine and stitch all the way around three sides, leaving one side completely open. Um, one, whichever side is going to be your opening that matches the opening on your outside fabric that you just made. Okay, so now that you've stitched that, it should be closed on three sides. You can um, snip the corners if you want. You can cut off the excess fabric. Just be careful not to cut your seams and don't cut too close to your stitch line. You don't want to accidentally cut that. All right, so next you're going to want to get your outside fabric that you sewed. You're going to leave your inner fabric facing right sides together. Do not flip it right side out. So leave it so that the wrong side is facing you. You're going to now take it and you're going to put it inside of your outer fabric. Now, remember, you have two layers of crinkle paper. So this needs to go in between those two layers of crinkle paper so that there's crinkle paper on both sides of the sack. So um, you're going to fit this right in between. So, um, inner fabric should be longer than your outer fabric so when you pull it out you should have about three inches sticking out you want to line it's real important that you line your seams up okay so what I would do is um, reach your hand down into the bottom of your sack and kind of hold on to both of the fabrics at the bottom so you can pull out this remember we left three extra inches up here so but I, I want to make sure that this bottom stays at the bottom so I got both pieces of fabric here. I think I may actually clip it there for a second just so I can arrange the top the way I want. Okay, now, there we go. See how this is longer? That's what you're going for. You need that extra top. Now fold this over like this. Okay, so, it's, so right now your project should look like this. Okay, now you don't want this raw edge because that's just not pretty. So we're gonna fold this just a little bit under to test. so we're gonna hide our raw edge to make a nice smooth edge. Now this is where you might have to use pins. All right, grab some pins here. Um, I see if this is this is rolled over so you can't see that wall edge. We're just gonna pin that in place. Try to make it even all the way around. Um, you can measure it with a ruler or however you want to do it. Flip it over. Roll it the same way on the other side. There we go. 
All right. Now I should have something that looks like this. Okay, so now what you wanna do is you're gonna go over to your sewing machine and we're going to stitch this in place, but you don't, you wanna leave an opening about this wide so you can put your boning in. So you're gonna to wanna to stitch all the way around this circle. Like you're gonna put this over top of your machine like this um, and you're gonna stitch all the way around, but I would leave an opening about an inch wide on one side. So if you noticed, um, I took the tray off my sewing machine um, if you have an industrial machine, you can do this. Um, if you have an industrial machine, you know how to do this probably. So there is no arm to take off on an industrial machine, but you can still do this task. Okay, so it should look like this. You should have it in your machine like this. You notice. And we're going to stitch all the way around, but we are going to leave about an inch opening. Okay, so now that you've stitched the roll in place, find where you left your opening. Mine's right here. Um, you're going to want to get your boning. What I did was I um, shoved a piece through, the, like I did like this. So I took a little piece off, and then I cut it. And then I pulled down the, the casing, and I just stitched across it to hold it in place. So that when I go to put this boning through, if you see there's a stitch there, the boning won't come out. You're going to want to feed this boning through here. The amount of boning you need is dependent on how wide your snuggle sack is, so or your crinkle sack. So we're just going to put this through your opening and it should feed all the way around. You may have to mess with it a little bit. Okay, so we're back at the beginning again. You know, and then we're gonna fix this up in a second. But, um, so that's, that's how it looks right now, but I might do two layers of boning. So let's cut it off there because the boning mashed up here. So let's just snip this. So you're going to cut this extra piece up inside and then... Okay, so now all your boning is on the inside. So what's real important now is that you grab... You're going to pull up. See how I'm holding it at the top of this? I clipped this because it helps me to do this next step. Um, I don't want my boning to slide. So that's what I don't want is the boning to slide in this area. So I'm going to clip it up at the top. I can feel it with my fingers. Wherever it's doubled, I'm just putting a clip. If you don't have a clip, um, you can hold this with your hands when you stitch this. You don't want to stitch over the boning, but you want to make sure the boning is not sliding around in this gap right here. Um, so we're just going to hold this up at the top real tight and just clip it in place so it doesn't slide. What I am going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to sew this opening closed and then I'm going to put an additional stitch right below the boning so that the boning doesn't move around in this area. Okay, so I closed off the opening and if you can see my boning is right here, I mean you can literally like see it. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing my presser foot up against that boning. You see where it's hitting it. And I'm going to put a stitch all the way around. That way it locks that boning in place right there. You can do a straight stitch, a decorative stitch. Don't run over the boning, but you just want to keep the boning. This is a big space. If you don't put a stitch near this boning, it's going to move back and forth the entire time you have this uh, crinkle sack. Okay, so now you've done that. So if you see, you have two options though. You can leave it and be done with it. Or um, what will happen is right now you can go like this which is fine. It's not going to hurt anything. It's completely closed off. There's no seams, but if you don't want that to happen, um, I'm going to stick my hand in. I'm going to take the corner. I'm going to get a clip and I'm going to clip that glue to the outside fabric. Make sure I clip both fabrics. I need a bigger clip for this, but you do that on both corners. You can also, I guess you could have top stitched this before we did the top part and um, top stitched it in place, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go over my sewing machine and put a tiny little stitch in each corner, kind of like it's supposed to be there. Maybe even like just a little decorative like stitch right here, like a flower or something, just to, to, just to tack that inside fabric to the outside fabric so that the, it can't be pulled right side out. Okay, you guys, that's it. This is your finished project. I'm gonna go give it to my ferrets and see if they like it.
basically what I did was um, I added just a little tack down here so now you can't pull it out. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Silly. 